uh, on top of that, well, as an aside, I did actually DJ this weekend on Friday and Saturday, which was again double header, which is always an interesting um, start to the weekend. Very tiring, but you know, interesting to say the least. On Friday, I played at Tapis, which was great as usual in Westford Stratford, and on Saturday, I played a house party in Dawson or in Hackney, near London Fields. A very interesting experience. We took some speakers with us, took a mixer, we I set up shop there, plugged everything in, blah blah blah, and again, a quite really really good house party. I have to be honest. So, um, one of the probably the better ones I've been to, I think partly because of the house itself, it was a really decent size. You know, sometimes because I think I've been so used to playing in warehouse parties in Hackney Wick, which are usually in warehouses or like abandoned, you know, commercial buildings, which are really big. And sometimes it's like a nightclub in there, right? And usually, uh, apart from Halloween house parties or New Year's Eve house parties, they're never that full because, you know, everyone's got their own things they're going to. Um, you can never quite fill the room as much as you really hope to. Even if you're the person organizing the party, it's never that full. So it kind of loses a bit of the house party vibe to it, right? But this house party felt really good because um, the, the rooms were really small. The kitchen was tiny. I, I guess it probably could fit, at the most, 50 people, I'd say, in the kitchen. And it had a really big garden as well, had a, a kind of a, a middle floor and upstairs too that you could go into and sit in people's rooms. But for the most part, the kitchen was tiny, um, which kind of, again, led to a lot of intimacy. The people in front of me were just standing. Literally, there was like two, three, three rows, three, two or three rows in front of me, like hanging out, which made things really fun. And just a really good, fun experience. I really, really enjoyed myself in that house party. A really good time. Um, I got a lot of good compliments on people. Again, it's always nice. To, I think in the beginning, I, was, I used to get a little bit annoyed when people would be like, oh my God, loud, you really knew how to like... Uh, play for the room um whatever kind because of, sometimes it can kind of come across as, like they were surprised i could do that again maybe because of um my appearance and what i look like and stuff maybe they think you know i don't know the scene i'm not a part of the culture or whatever maybe i don't know what, whatever it may be i used to get annoyed by it at first but now i think it's part of my special power i can go into a room um, especially electronic music spaces because I, I guess i because i don't look like an electronic music fan maybe for the for the for the, for the uh, face of it i'm not maybe wearing a, i don't know i'm not wearing um uh i don't know a four tech t-shirt apex twin merch or something i maybe don't have a choker on or something so people kind of you know automatically think you're not part of the scene but i think my ability to go into a room not look like people that will probably dance in there and be able to deliver the stuff they one day want to hear is probably my special power and something that i'm really conscious of that i do well going forward um, and that's kind of something I've been very, very aware of for the most part. And um, yeah, it kind of worked out in my favor again, because I think because I was the first person to play. I played from like 11 until half one. Um, they loved it. I set the tempo of the party. I organized the speakers. I got everything going. And yeah, it worked out really well for me, man. I really, really enjoyed it. It was such a, such a good time. And I'm really pleased and happy that I got invited to do it in the first place again. And I think those things are really important to do because I think sometimes in those kind of spaces, there's always a person in there that you don't know who's kind of has is the decision maker or somebody that can influence a decision in certain parties or some other place that you go to. So if they see you play and they see that you're a good person, they could easily recommend you to somebody else. And I think I've noticed in my life anyway, most of the best gigs I've gotten haven't been because I've been asking people to play somewhere. It's usually always been because I've showed and proved, right? Which is the annoying part of it. I think that goes back to the whole, like, you know, when you were in school and you could never get a job. I knew, for me anyway, my first job came, you know, it, it, it didn't come until a long, long time into my career or a long, long time into me applying. Maybe my first job was like 21, not including my stuff that I did when I was at Hollywood Bowl. I worked for a little while at Hollywood Bowl, but you know, my first, first kind of real job that I got from my CV was maybe when I was 21. And even then, it kind of came again through a recommendation. Um, that's how most of it stuff comes around, right? It comes partly from your effort and partly from recommendation, especially in the beginning. Um, once you get, you know, a bit, of recommend, a bit of experience under your belt, you can then start selling yourself just as like a candidate off the, off the back of that. Um, now I've got like, you know, I've got a five to 10 years worth of experience on my CV. I don't necessarily need someone to bring me in, but in the beginning of the DJing stuff, I used to kind of reach out to bars and clubs and email people, cold email them, send them send them um, mixes. Sometimes I'll try and call places and stuff and it never really stuck. It never worked out. I never really understood why because I'd be like, you know, the people that you have playing here are shit. I can do a much better job, blah, 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 you know. But then you realize, you think, no, actually the point is it's not that I'm not good or that they don't, you know, they don't think I'm good. It's that they don't want to take the chance, right? Um, if you know someone can do the job, and there's someone that you know, someone that you can depend on. Why would you then, why would you then go and risk and gamble on someone like me emailing you randomly? Because the chances of me being good are really thin, right? Small, for instance, right? Because for the most part, people that cold call you or cold email you are usually the shit ones, right? For the most part, it's never usually the people that you want to play at your place or you want to take part or want to be involved in anything that you're doing. It's usually somebody that's like, you know, trying to chance it. 
So I get the the hesitation to be like, you know, let's give this guy a chance because if I'm shit, if I go into a space now, I, I don't know, I just start playing hardcore in like a pub in, in Wolves or somewhere, it's going to be hard for them to take me off the, off the decks, right? They're going to feel bad about it. They're going to let me play. I'm going to drive out punter, pun, punters. They're going to lose money at the bar and everyone loses then, right? I don't get booked again. They get, you know, made to look embarrassed. They have to pay me for it so they get out of pocket. It's just, and then next person that comes and emails them again will never get a chance again because I fucked it up. So they can't take that chance. So they'd rather just book somebody who already plays there or Simon knows the crowd, blah, blah, blah. So now I've realized that because of that, I have to, depend, especially now in the beginning stage, I have to depend more on my recommendations and playing in spaces with other people who are also good or in places or playing in spaces with people who know what good looks like or know what good sounds like. And it could be like, oh shit, this guy's pretty cool. He looks pretty decent. He seems like a, a decent guy. Let's get him again for something else. I'm hoping that is the case. And again, that's why I mentioned previously, I'm going to steer away from the whole party scene of it because I want to be, again, more rated in the sense of like, you know, this guy's a good DJ and we want him around as opposed to like, he's a lot of fun and he hangs out and he stays out until late. That isn't really what I want to go for, I think, in general. But yeah, that's about it really for me. Um, on the DJ side of things, oh, I'm thirsty today, yeah. I've been talking a bit too much. Um, Not a bit too much, it's only been half an hour. But anyway, that was it for the most part. I did that. And that was went pretty well. And again, yeah, I've got another chocker block weekend coming up. Probably going to DJ again on what sat this Friday coming up. Next, well, until the end of the month, I've got a Saturday gig at Heathcote and Star, and another one maybe on the bank holiday Monday coming up again. Um, for information regarding that, check out my website agassino.com forward slash DJ gigs, all one word, or just go to agassino.com, click on my DJ gigs tab, and you can see all my dates on there listed.